name is Marshall. I'm Charlie, and you can follow us on the extra shot at on Instagram and Twitter. And we've got an amazing last show for you today. Yes, we, we really do. do. But before we get into it all, we have the news. Marshall, yes. go take us through it. We do. A statewide warning has been issued after more than five snake attacks in the last four days. Victoria's Department of Environment, Land, Water and Planning have issued a statement saying that these cold-blooded reptiles relish the warmer weather and will become more active over the coming months. Whilst there have been no snake-related fatalities, Victorians are warned to remain vigilant and, if possible, clear any piles of rocks in backyards, regularly mow your lawn and never attempt to pick up a snake if you do happen to see one. China has revealed a bizarre plan to launch a fake moon satellite into space in hopes of cutting down electricity usage. The project was proposed by Wu Chungfeng, chairman of Chengdu Aerospace, at a recent conference where he stated that street lights are burning excessive amounts of electricity that will not be needed once the device is launched. He also stated that designs for the satellite have been years in the making, but the technology has finally allowed for the device to be created. The fake moon is anticipated to be eight times brighter than the real moon and will be controlled by a team working 24-7 to ensure everything runs smoothly. Many Chinese locals have voiced concern about the impact on the environment and animal species living in the path of the satellite. The satellite is, is, the satellite is estimated to be completed by the end of 2020 and a cost for the production of the satellite is yet to be released. Prime Minister Scott Morrison has apologised on behalf of the nation for failing and abandoning thousands of survivors of, in of institutional sex abuse. In an address to federal parliament, the Prime Minister apologised on behalf of the nation for Australia's long history of ignoring the pleas of sexual abuse victims. Opposition leader Bill Shorten was also present at the apology and stated, there are some wrongs that cannot be made right, but Australia says sorry and Australia says we believe you. Marshall, what do you think about this event? I think it's 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 really about time that sort of the government uh, sort of at least acknowledge that there has been some grave injustices injustices when yeah, it comes definitely. to sort of institutionalised mm -hmm. child sex abuse, whether that be in uh, churches or clergy, clergy or wherever it's been alleged. Uh, it, there's clearly been a fault. Yes. At some point, and it's it to mention the fact to first of all mention the fact. That there was a fault. Mm -hmm. I, that's I, it, it's a step. I think mm -hmm. it's a really it's a step that needs to be taken. Yeah. Well, it's because of the um, royal commission that was set up by uh, Julia Gillard that all of this has happened. Um, so I think it's really important that these people are now able to tell their stories and that they are finally believed after being you know pushed to the side for so long. And um, Scott Morrison also said that a museum is going to be set up with um, artifacts and different things from past and all these churches specifically to kind of raise awareness about this issue and make sure that we don't ever forget that this type of thing can happen and it has happened throughout history. you got to look at history and not repeat the same yes, mistakes. Yes, exactly. And you've got to show that history to not have it be forgotten. Yeah. And uh, again, it's a step in the right direction. And when these national apologies happen, I think the last one, of course, was, I believe, Kevin Rudd's sorry yes. speech to, mm -hmm. uh, to Aboriginals for the Stolen Generation. Mm -hmm. uh, and they're very... Uh, important and very important like you're gonna look back on them in 20 30 years and be like i, I saw that yeah and that that's something yes, you can really... i feel i feel the same way about this this event so i yeah it, it's something you can look back on as a citizen wh whoever you are so that's that's a good thing i'm glad that happened yes 100 percent. um and now it is time for sport Joining us in the studio for the last sports Very last time. Sp sports segment of the of the whole semester. There we go. There we go. Got it's the hail. <laughs> it's the hail and Billy. What have you got for us today? What Just are we talking about? How are you doing? I'm fantastic. How are you? <laughs> Just making sure you know. It took you a while, but um, yeah. No. Um. Well, what do we got? Tell it's us about the. Yeah, we're gonna. Well, have to end the way we started with uh, the Premier League. It's um. Really, really kicked into gear the last um, last few weeks. We've got a, five teams within two points of each other at the top of the table, so it's starting to look like a very um, very intense run-in. Hopefully it stays this way um, towards the end of the year. Yeah, I completely agree. So. 
yeah, like I'm, well, as you can see, Chelsea's doing way better than expected. So um, a young Chelsea supporter here is very, very happy about that. <laughs> and I guess Liverpool is bombing out like they are. I'm telling you, man, you guys should have been up there. He's had your opportunities. Now, if you didn't know, he, uh, Billy is a Liverpool fan. You mean should yes. have been up there. We're equal top. Like, I, I, mean, I expected you guys go. to actually take All right. that. We're equal top. Back. I'm, I'm going to play devil's advocate here. Like we're, gonna, we're, gonna, we're, gonna, we're having an argument. Is this our first live argument? <laughs> live argument on air. On air. Yeah, oh, we've had plenty. What are you talking about? Oh, okay. <laughs> Liverpool, Chelsea. We'll get to them both. Uh, we'll start with Chelsea. Uh, Charlie, what happened? In- um, I heard that the coaches got into a bit of a tussle. Can you tell us a little was bit a, about it? Yeah, so you would have been watching that as a keen yeah, Chelsea you fan. Don't, you don't know. miss about Osari. Let's just put it this way. Yeah? And you got Mourinho. <laughs> what happened? Well, um, obviously Chelsea had a very controversial late uh, equaliser and uh, Mourinho didn't seem very happy about that. So he decided to let his... Um, he decided to get a bit vocal about that, you know, mm-hmm. showing the Chelsea fans the, the three sign. That's how many trophies he won of the team. Um, and yeah, I don't think Sari took too kind to that either. And um, how do I say, two egos collide, huh? Appeared to be um, Chelsea scored a go late, of course. Um, in late into stoppage time, Ross Barkley to get a draw um, when it looked minute, like United were going to steal a win. Don't get and any later than that. one of Sari's assistant coaches has run across the front of Mourinho and he's a fist pumping and yelling in his face. And um, he didn't like that. And he's leapt out of his dugout and started chasing him across the other side. And then, of course, security got involved. And um, there was nothing more than just a few words being said from a distance in the I, end. But uh, a, a volatile it, character in a volatile situation. And we I, got, um, I used to call it handbags when I used to see it. I used to see it because it looked like the old, old, old granny's having a fight. <laughs> yeah, it's a bit, it's a bit, there's a bit of that um, sort of action. Yeah, well, handbags is probably a good way to describe it. The result, we'll go to the actual result of the game, not the games that happen at the end. Yeah. Uh, oh. Chelsea fits a late draw of Man United. Good game. I, I saw it. It, looked, it was tough. And Chelsea, just especially at the end, just kept driving and pushing and peppering that goal and yeah. finally got the equaliser. What did they, you make of the performance? It's, well, it's just, it's just another Sarri uh, team playing Sarri ball. Huh? They are um, constantly pressuring, constantly counter-attack, constantly on the counter-attack, my apologies. But, um, yeah, like... To be honest, if you just saw it, you could you could sense that they were coming back. Like after they scored that first goal, like I'm just telling you, like it felt like. And Manchester United don't have a good track record in holding leads. Let's be honest, they haven't they haven't been quite the best team this season either. Mm. And their defense is a bit shaky. So I don't know. You just expect it as yeah. a Chelsea supporter now. Expect something magical to happen. Well, as you said, they're two points off top of the table. Above them are Liverpool and Man, Man City equal on 23. And then uh, below Chelsea are uh, Arsenal and Tottenham also on 21 points. So two points between the top five. Liverpool, my team as well, Billy. How do they go on the weekend? What did you make of their performance? Uh, just, yeah, it's great through a 1 0 win against Huddersfield. Rode their luck uh, a little bit. So Big Salah's of... back, but. That's, that's Huddersfield hit the post a couple of times. Yeah, Salah did score. He got the mm-hmm. goal. It was a, a little bit of a goal drought by his standards. Mm-hmm. Um, well, well Mohamed Salah, he scored like, what, 38 goals last year yeah, or something? Just in the Premier League alone. Yeah, yeah he, he broke the record, yeah. Incredible. So incredible it's his last first, season. first goal of the season? No, no, he had a couple early on. He got, uh, it's his first since against Brighton back in a few weeks ago. So his third of the season, but he, um, yeah, a little bit. By his standards, a long drought. As a Chelsea fan, you wouldn't want to see Salah warm up or else it could be game over. Oh, mate. It could be game over Liverpool-wise. Mate, I'm happy. I love Salah, to be honest with you. <laughs> I'm, I'm a Salah fan. He used to play for Chelsea, actually. He did? He didn't did. Know he was that. originally signed by Chelsea? So, yeah. Wasn't he, any good? And then he came oh, to the Reds? Mate, he was good. They just didn't give him a go. I'll be honest with you. <laughs> He had, he had that blistering speed, you know, like off the wing. But they don't know how to use him. See, when you give him his role and then you let him play, look what happens, you know. And also in that top five. Arsenal, they've won five, or they've won ten in a row. Yeah, ten in a row in all comps. They're, um, I think a lot of people wrote them off at the start of the season, had the losses to um, Man City and Chelsea um, at the start, and then, yeah, they've just reared off ten goals, scored um, as good a goal as you'll ever see overnight against Leicester. Oh, with, uh, the passes, lovely. so many players involved, side to side, end to end. It was, um, yeah, it was, it was um, really, really good to watch. So, uh, yeah, I, I, they haven't really played the best quality of teams in the last, um, those 10 games that you speak of, but you can only beat who you play, and they've been beating teams and playing really good stuff in the process. But they yeah. have a confidence builder for them, though, to be yeah, honest absolutely. with you. Know, they got Liverpool in, not this weekend, the one after, yeah, so that'll, that'll, be, be that'll be a challenge That'll be them. a good test for them, yeah. Um, so I was just going to ask, what do you think about Australians in the Premier League? 
Like, how they've been going? Sort of. How they've been going? Talking about Moy. That's yeah, only Moy. Yeah, well, Moy, we, Moy and Ryan. So, um, <laughs> oh, yeah, Matt yeah, Ryan Keith, Aaron yeah. Moy's hardest field are, are struggling. They still haven't won a game. Yeah. Um, Moy's yeah, performing. So they're looking, yeah, Moy's he's, he's doing his job, but I think the whole team yeah. probably haven't been performing yeah. as you'd expect. So, not. Had a good run. Well. So hopefully he's um, still there next season, but it's not looking that good at the moment. And yeah, Ryan's Brighton team is sort of doing pretty similar to what he mm-hmm. did last year. He's pretty solid without being spectacular. In, but Individually, as, they're, they're doing their jobs. I think so. so. I think so. Yeah. Um, they'd like a bit more success from a team perspective. But um, yeah, yeah hopefully we'll see Aaron Moy running around there beyond this season, but um, we'll see how that plays out. Mm-hmm. Absolutely. Well, I appreciate your time for throughout yes, the year. Thanks for coming here for the last time. And yeah. also for right. Jack, for the one-week substitution yes. you made last <laughs> week, or the week before. Oh, big, apologies. Big mm-hmm. But appreciate your time and appreciate no, no all boys. your knowledge. No problem. And uh, we'll catch you boys later. Appreciate it. Um, and now it is time for Humans of Latrobe. Now joining us in studio is the producer of this show, Tim Stone. Welcome. Hi, Charlie. Hi, Marshall. <laughs> How are you? I'm very well. It's funny to be on the other side of the glass. Yeah, how's it feel? It's, um, yeah, it's, it's good. You know, to be, we're either uh, saving the best to last or... Yeah, uh, yeah saving the, it's saving yeah. the best to last. Mm-hmm. Isn't it? Yeah, yeah. I was at the bottom of the deck. We had to finally get her out <laughs> yeah. and pull it. Uh, you say had a lot of... Obviously, in the intro, I there did. was a lot of... 20 years in the media. It's mm-hmm. a long time. You've switched, obviously, to teaching. You're doing teaching. You're still doing yes, some freelance stuff. Yeah. How's the switch been for you? And what have you what do you gain from? Uh, look, I think um, I haven't taught for about 20 years when I started teaching again, like, last year. So it's really, like, interesting to come back. I come back into the classroom. No one has notepads anymore. Everything's yeah. on computer. Mm-hmm. You know, you're lucky if you get a whiteboard, <laughs> you know, things like that. But, no, I, look, teaching is really fun. It's really kind of energising. You know, I get to learn things that I don't know about, like, you know, web series like H3 yeah. and things that are popular that mm-hmm. I kind of, you know, need to know about, which is yeah. good. Um, yeah. So you've had a very long career in television. Tell us a little bit about... You're making me sound yeah, very no, old. No, yeah. no, no. I meant as a compliment. Oh, thank you. Thank yeah. you. So yeah. tell us a little bit about the things that you've done. Yeah, so I started working, I guess, at Film Victoria in like mm-hmm. 2001. And I was in a very interesting unit called the Melbourne Film Office. It doesn't exist anymore. And our job was to basically attract Hollywood productions to Victoria. And that really took a kind of, uh, you know, got a shot in the arm when the government started building studios in Victoria. And mm-hmm. suddenly we were like kind of flying to Hollywood and kind of doing meetings and trying to bring people out. And yeah, yeah and I was, I was like, I set up a database and I was location scouting. I was taking photos and video of locations and dealing with Hollywood directors and producers. Now, That's so cool. Do you have any funny stories with some Hollywood directors or I Hollywood do. stars? Have, uh, Yes, many, that, that many, you can mention, that many. you can mention without getting in trouble, Tim. Um, no, look, yeah, like a couple of stories. Like I did, uh, I spent, like, you know, you'd have these projects come in, like passion projects. So Where the Wild Things Are, which was sort of Spike Jones, mm-hmm. and, you know, there was, those kind of people would be starting to make feature films. I think that was, you know, kind of his third, third feature film. They're looking around the world. There's this equation that you can't actually physically fit the number of Hollywood films that get made into North America or Canada. So they have to spill over. They have to come to wow. New Zealand, mm-hmm. Australia, other places that have studios. So, you know, someone like Spike Jones is looking for a film. You can, you, can, you, can, you can make them come here. You can kind of work really hard. You get the script. You break it down into locations. You find those locations. And you just work on it for a very long time. Mm-hmm. And then um, that, like, so literally worked on that for about three years. And, yeah, yeah I, you know, I got to go to, go to Hollywood Got to go do the, do the deal with, with the guys, with my boss. Sat in a kind of, you know, Hollywood executive's office and kind of have the conversation about everything about except to do with the film coming here. And then, you know, celebrated at a, at a dinner and yeah. had a karate fight with Spike Jones. Oh, who can say that? That they've not, had a karate not, not many fight with Spike Jones. Yeah, I did hurt my leg, but that's okay. <laughs> yeah. Was it self-inflicted or was it... it was, I did try to kick very high. And don't I'm do a little that. bit taller than him. and You don't you know, do that. No, you mm-hmm. don't. But I took them out. You'd take out, you'd also kind of take wine and dine directors and producers when they came to Australia. That was the fun side of the thing. So you'd actually, you'd take out, take them out to, 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 take them out to, to nightclubs. Um, no, they, they would be made by the executive team. Oh, they always okay. had to be very mm-hmm. fancy. Got a good meal. 
Um, but you'd take them out to, say, Honky Tonks was a very cool nightclub that was around many years ago. Took them all there, took them to Cherry Bar, you know. Interesting. It was fun, yeah. So you said it all, Tim. I've seen it all. <laughs> Just, we'll move on. And I'm on. seeing more every day. I can imagine. Guys, your a, careers. Yeah. yeah. And the fact you're a documentarian, mm-hmm. as I like to say. Yeah. What sort of the documentaries have you made? You made some, a lot of stuff for the ABC. You've made a lot. A lot of documentaries. Yeah, um, art focused stuff mainly, yeah. but. So I, I worked in the TV arts area, so um, they, which used to be much bigger than, than what it is now these days. But it was like they had a one hour Sunday afternoon art show, they had a once a week, half hour art show, and they produced internal content. And then it all went, it all went online. Uh, there was like a g- arts gateway I worked on. But yeah, um, I made kind of four documentary series for iView which are still on there. And I guess my interest is subcultures. Mm-hmm. What about yeah. it sort of you get sparks your interest? I just like telling stories that, you know, other people don't get to hear. And, that, you know, these are little cultures that if you don't pay attention to them, you know, they're the things that make you know, Australia or Melbourne in particular unique. Mm-hmm. So I, I think they need, they need the attention. They need to be handled in the right way. You know, like, you know, it's good to hang out with People are doing graffiti, you know, yeah. uh, people who go going exploring drains. Yeah, is the, uh, the graffiti documentary, is that your favourite one that you've made? Yeah, it is actually. Yeah, it is. I think I just had the right amount of time and the right, there was a really good energy on that project. Yeah. And that's really important. We had a great crew to work with. Mm-hmm. Um, and, that, you know, a lot of, it was a lot, it's really difficult working with people who do tagging, particularly like kind of graffiti artists. Um, mm-hmm. It's very, very difficult. They don't want to talk on camera. They don't, I can imagine. you know, or well, some do, some do. Yeah. yeah. But, uh, but that side of graffiti that I was looking at is not, uh, you know, it's, it's, they don't, they don't like to be known for certain activities. Yeah. So it was challenging, but you kind of build up some great relationships mm-hmm. with some people. And that's what it's all about. It's like telling great stories with great people. Awesome. Now, heard about you, we're trying to get a little bit narcissistic. We want to know. Just a little. How we've done this semester. Yes. All in your eyes. eyes. Don't grade us. Obviously, it's not, not allowed. <laughs> I, I do actually have to grade you. I know. Well, yeah. don't, no, grade we don't, don't, don't grade us. Don't want to get that embarrassed. But how did we go in your no, eyes? Well, let's put it this way. I was thinking, you know, um, it's it's final week of semester. I've already done another interview for someone else this week. And mm-hmm. I was thinking, it's really unusual. I don't usually... I'm the one usually asking the questions. Mm-hmm. And suddenly when I'm having questions asked at me, it's it's unusual. And then I was, why does that usually happen? It's usually when I'm promoting something. I'm promoting mm-hmm. something I've made that's been You're released. Right. And I was thinking, I'm not doing that this time. I'm doing, what am I promoting this week? And I'm promoting you guys and yeah. the team back here. So, you know, I think um, that's a roundabout answer of saying, you know, I think you guys have done really well. I think it's, this is a great facility to be able to kind of do it this really at university. Is. It's fantastic. Talk to you about a broadcast to the web. Mm-hmm. This was not even a, you know, an idea kind of 20 odd years ago when I was at university. So I think it's a great facility. And it's great. You guys have so many skills. You know, you kind of grow up. You grow up kind of talking to cameras. You grow up with video cameras in your pockets. So that, that is something you, you yep. know, you take for granted. That was not how it was, you know, yeah. for, you know, we'd what? struggle to get the video eight camera out. You know, <laughs> yeah. We'd have to edit on Umatic. I understand. You know. Yeah. So appreciate your time, Tim. Thank you, Appreciate Tim. you coming in and we appreciate, you we appreciate your help. Your service throughout the year. So yes, yeah. appreciate well, it. Thanks guys. Appreciate it. Have yeah. a good time. Um, so now just for a little bit of fun, we here at the Extra Shot decided that we would have a dad joke battle. So let's take a look at that. Rock, paper, scissors, shoot. Yay. Let's go. What did the fish say when it ran into the wall? Damn. What did Mike Tyson say when he got hit with a hammer? I don't know. Ouch, I'm really Thor. (laughs) (laughs) A red and a blue ship have just collided in the Caribbean. Apparently the survivors are marooned. You do much art in primary school. <laughs> <laughs> yeah, you red and blue, and you get. Yeah, I know. Okay, cool. <laughs> Just making sure. Yeah, I'm out. I feel like we might have to do it. Hang on. What do the Secret Service yell when they're protecting the president? What? Donald Duck. Mm. <laughs> That's a good one. <clears throat> what do you call a fat psychic? What do you call a fat psychic? A fortune teller. Hmm. Not bad. How does a hamburger introduce his girlfriend? How? Meet Patty. Hmm. Mm-hmm. What do you call a fat superhero? Why are all yours fat jokes? But what? The snack panther. Hmm. Yeah, it's a good one. 
What do you get when you cross a cow and a duck? What? Milk and quackers. <laughs> <laughs> That's not even funny. Why did the blonde stare at the orange juice container? Why? Because it said concentrate. That's not funny. <laughs> Why was the broom late to work? I don't know. It overswept. What's the best part about gardening? What? Getting down and dirty with your hose. It's a garden, it's gardening, like it's not. Yeah, I'm gonna tap out. Okay. Big boy. Big boy. Am I in the frame? Yeah. Knock, knock. Who's there? Interrupting cow. Interrupting cow. <laughs> Didn't you let me finish? <laughs> you gotta laugh. Oh, that's funny. <laughs> really rushed through it. That was funny. How many apples grow on a tree? All of them. <laughs> yeah, jumpy. Halal high five, but I don't know if you did. It's not halal. How do you make a squirrel come down a tree? I don't know. Choking information. <laughs> Just say it. Pull down your pants and show him your nuts. <laughs> Did you actually get what I said? <laughs> okay. <clears throat> What's Forrest Gump's Facebook password? I'm not sure. One Forrest One. Oh. Because it sounds like run. I like movie jokes. Yeah. That's good. It's like a quote. Like when yeah. he's running. These are just oh, yeah. becoming. Is that a joke? Probably not. What did the buffalo say to his son when he left college? Bye, son. Yeah, he did. Mm. Nice. All right, here we go. Don't do it like this. Bad time to come in too, because I've got a corker lined up. Oh no. Bad time to come in. Did you hear about the uh, cheese factory explosion in France? No. There was nothing left but debris. What kind of car does an egg drive? An egg. Uh, I'm not sure. A Yolks wagon. <laughs> not bad. Not bad. That's, that's a chuckle. Not bad. That's not a chuckle. That's not I a chuckle. I broke him. I broke him. He's laughing. He's that's laughing. Not a it is. That was a chuckle. That's not a chuckle. <laughs> Definitely not. I'll be out. Someone, someone come here. That was like These are no disappointing. Good. I'm, I'm, no one's more disappointed than me, I assure you. What do you call a fake noodle? What? An impasta. That's a really good one. <laughs> Why couldn't the toilet paper cross the road? Why? He got stuck in a crack. <laughs> <laughs> I'm gonna leave now. <laughs> what do you call a Mexican who lost his car? Carlos. Yes, damn. So good. I am good. What cheese isn't yours? What? Nacho cheese. <laughs> <laughs> Bang. <laughs> so, Marshall, you were not there for I wasn't. this dad joke battle. So, because it was a tie, we are going to battle right now live. It's sudden death. All right, let's go. Okay, you go first. All right. And whoever whoever laughs first loses, and that's it. I just went on a once in a lifetime holiday. I'll tell you what, never again. Mm. That one, that's subpar. Oh! Subpar. Um, okay. I've deleted all the phone numbers of all the Germans I know from my mobile phone. It's now Hans Free. It's not bad. I decided to sell my vacuum last week. It was just collecting dust. Well, that's not funny because it's true. That's just not funny. What did the mountain climber call his son? What? Cliff. That's 
That's nasty. I start, I start a new job in Seoul next week. Mm -hmm. I hope it's a good career move for me. I don't know about that one. Um, why did the coffee go to the police? Why? It got mugged. These are all horrible. I was in a horse race and I got hit in the head with an apple seed on the, at the finishing line. I was pipped at the post. Is that a horse racing pun? It's an apple pun. Oh, I didn't get it. Um, <laughs> oh no, I laughed. We're on for five years, folks. No. <laughs> I wasn't laughing at you being funny. I was laughing at um, me not understanding the joke. I'll take it. Okay, you take it. Velcro, what a ripoff. Oh no, that's terrible. <laughs> that's terrible. I think we're done with this. Oh, joke. we're done. We're you done. Win, that didn't work. You win, you win. That didn't work. I'll give it to you. Charlie, we've got something really cool right now. We do. Um, it is our very last segment yes. of the show yes. ever. And there's a lot of people who do a lot of work backstage. A lot so of people. So we're going to throw backstage and we're going to let you know and let you get to know. We're going to cross live. Who make us look good. Yes. So, so let's go. cross live now. <laughs> we're back. We're back. <laughs> let's go back to the control room. So please tell us your name. I'm Alicia. And tell us what you do behind the scenes. So I'm a vision switcher. If you want to come closer to have a look, I'll show you some things. So pretty much I can go back to the and well, this is cool. I can put up some supers, show you Charlie Wright's super. Oh, wow. <laughs> Billy's. And some other cool stuff that I can't press right now yeah. because oh, cool. That's all right. you can see me. Awesome. Well, thank you, Alicia. <laughs> Great. Thank you for that. Now moving on. Sorry, Hello. Alice. What is your name and what is your role on the show? My name is Jenna and I am the camera operator for the show. What does that mean? What do you do? How do you make us look good? <laughs> well, it's hard to make you look good, but I do my best. Um, basically, <laughs> I set up all the shots for the show. And while the show is going, I make sure the right shots are available for Alicia to vision switch. Cool. Well, thank you very much. Thank you for no that. No worries. See ya. Bye. Hi. Hello. So please tell us your name. My name is Esil. And what is your role on the show? I am the producer, which means I basically tell you guys what to do and speak in your ears all the time. Yes, that's true. <laughs> yeah. Now, what's the toughest part of being a producer? Um, kind of everything that comes um, uh, right before the show, Tuesday mornings, um, yeah. because I've got my normal job on and then I've got messages, you guys are messaging me all the time and it's a bit stressful. But then, you know, while the show's happening, you guys yeah. are amazing, so it's all yeah. good. Right. Thank you. <laughs> Thank, Thank you. you appreciate still. your time throughout the year. Thank you. Thank you. No worries. Lastly, we've got Jack, the hey hardest job yes. in <laughs> television. Hey guys, how, how you going? Yeah, I've been all right. Um, basically my role here is to run the audio for you guys, so I make sure that you, your levels sound great, um, alright, um, so you're not too loud or too soft, um, just making you guys sound beautiful, and yeah, that's, that's basically it. Yeah. <laughs> well, thank you very awesome. much. Awesome, thank you, Jack. Thank you, everyone thank behind you. the scenes. Appreciate it. And that is it. That's it. That's it. That's our final show. How do you feel? I'm exhausted. I'm happy. I'm sad. I'm really sad. I appreciate your time, Charlie. You've been a wonderful co-host. Yes, you too. Um, I want to say, say thank you to everyone behind the scenes. Me and too. Amel in the hub and everyone who has helped us. Tim, and Tim. Appreciate everything you do. Yes. So, on behalf of everyone, have a good day. I'm Charlie. That's I'm Marshall. Marshall. We'll see you next time. Bye. <laughs>